everybody and welcome congratulations on joining us for this live we're going to be talking about all things equipment that you need for the masterclass i'm lisa shelley i'm community manager for formerly botanica and i'm joined by the wonderful brooke and suzanne so thank you so much guys for joining me for this one thank you lisa i'm glad we can sit and chat through all of our new masterclass participants yeah, exactly. This is the fun part of doing these guys because it gives us an opportunity to connect with our audience, see what they're doing, and just remind them that we have got their back when it comes to this masterclass. We're going to show them everything that they need to do. So no one needs to worry about anything. And for this live, we're going to go through the top five in type equipment sorry that you need uh, for the masterclass and break it down and just show you how simple and easy it is but Brooke if you'd just like to introduce yourself and just let everyone know who you are and what you do at Formula Botanica. So my name is Brooke Medhurst and I'm the formulation tutor at Formula Botanica so I work as part of the education team and I work to alter the course materials and update them I work on the our membership site which is called the lab keeping the libraries up to date I work in the grading pool to help students get through their grading and do their final projects and things like that. So some of you might recognize me from previous lives in quite a few lives that we do yep. for student support <laughs> sessions or live streams that we do on Facebook and any previous masterclasses, but I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. And Suzanne, you've had quite a journey with Formula Botanica because obviously you started off as a student, but if you could just let everyone know a little bit of insight into how you're sitting with us here today. Yes, for sure. Hi, Lisa and Brooke. Thank you so much for it, for everybody for being here. Again, my name is Suzanne and I'm one of the student mentors for Formula Botanica. There are seven of us and uh, we're always happy to see you and to support your journey as formulators. I started out as a student with Formula Botanica. I studied many courses with Formula Botanica and then graduated from them. And now I work as a student mentor. And I also look after the, um, the course lead for the Diploma in Organic Hair Care Formulation. And uh, yeah, so I launched my line of hair care products in November. And, and that's basically my journey, which continues on. And I'm always excited to be here and to see everybody joining for the masterclass. I'm so excited. Thank you so much. I can see lots of people that are joining from all over the world, Lisa. This is I awesome. know, exactly. Um, thank you, Suzanne. I was going to say hello to everyone in the comments. Denise, Shalina, Lisa, Carol, um, Jackie, thank you so much for joining us. We used to have to always ask people to let us know where they're from. And everyone just tells us now. Everyone keeps joining these masterclasses That's and having great. so much fun mm -hmm. with us, which is don't even need to ask anymore. So thank you so much, everyone. Please do let us know if you have a question. We will try and get to it at the end. Some of them we can't answer because we're just focusing on the five things that you need at the moment. Obviously, there's a few more, but you have to watch the masterclass to watch all of those. And we start the masterclass on April the 17th. So mm -hmm. if you don't have that in the diary, please get it in. You've still got time to get all your ingredients all your equipment and we just do these lives to just give you a little bit of extra assistance on the way so who has their workbook who is ready to go yes. please let us know in the comments if you have it just give us a little yes a little heart emoji we'd like to know what stage you're at who's gone on to the study area and ticked off those little things that you have to do who's checked everything they need we just want to know how far you've gone and just let us know how excited you are to join Yes, for sure. I'm really excited to see everybody joining in. And I want to know if everybody has their ticket and has downloaded their workbook. So make sure you comment and you say yes in the comments. <laughs> there you go. Right. We're already getting a few yeses. There's always that time awesome. to No one says no. And if you do say no, there'll be people from Formula Botanica hiding out in the comments helping you. So they should leave the link to get your free ticket to our masterclass, which starts on the 17th of April. Okay. So first question, Suzanne, I'm going to ask this to you. So do you okay. need lots of expensive equipment to start as a formulator? Because we get this comment all the time in our social communities. People always think you need so much stuff to just start. So what would you say to someone? Oh, no, not at all. You don't. You don't need any fancy equipment. And you can get started with basically what you have in the kitchen, many of the tools, and Brooke will share a little bit about that. 
But no, you don't need to spend a lot of money and, or get fancy equipment. So it's very easy to get started. Yeah. Brock, what do you think yeah. about that? I totally agree. So um, I went through the courses myself before I joined Formula Botanica. And I have my bag with me, which I used whilst I was studying <laughs> all of my equipment in. So it's got a little bigger over the years because my first bag did unfortunately break. But what did you call this? A 2.0 version 2.0? Lab in the bag 2.0. So it's first unveiling. Lab in the bag. I love version. that. <laughs> yeah. So this keeps all of the equipment that I've used for formulating in here. Um, now that I sort of formulate full time, I have a couple more bits of fancy equipment. But throughout my journey of doing the courses and learning to formulate, you need nothing more than what can fit in the wash bag. And as we're going to tell you today, there's only really five pieces of equipment that you really need. A lot of this is sort of extra stuff that makes it slightly easier. But there is five pieces that you really need. And that's not even that big, that bag. And you're formulating so much more and you're working for me, mm -hmm. Tanika, formulating or take part in our mm -hmm. blogs. You create a lot of the formulations for the masterclasses. So I that's just incredible. I think it's about 12 inches the whole the bag in exactly. terms of width so it's not big it's one of those wash bags that you can get on the plane so it's a one of those clear transparent ones that you can just carry on with you so that it's not big because you're not allowed to take much on a flight but yeah that's oh, awesome well the nice I, thing yeah, is it also has handles oh there you go <laughs> perfect <laughs> much easier than what i started with i can see some people commenting they started with a lab in the box and that's pretty much mm -hmm. what i started with as well i cleared out one drawer in my kitchen and that was my formulation drawer where i had all my tools and equipment so yeah that's amazing i'm just going to show this comment as well from jackie this says yes and i purchased my kit from essential wholesale and lab so that is amazing jackie congratulations awesome high five for jackie out there people really are getting involved this is the time of high excitement for the tanaka and we absolutely love it so thank you everyone for getting started okay so next question so where can people buy the tools they need um, for the masterclass book so there's lots of different options with tools the easiest one would probably be amazon you can get a lot of these things that we're going to show you on amazon the majority of the stuff I have comes from Amazon just because it's nice and easy and you can get sort of 10 packs of different things, which is really useful. You can get them from cosmetic suppliers, lots of places where you'll purchase your ingredients, such as Essential Wholesale will have little bits of equipment to help you get started. And another good, good tip is to look for things like kitchenware shops or charity shops or things like that, where they have little bits and pieces that can be really useful. So... Just as an example, I have this little spatula, which has Beatrix Potter on it that I found in a camping shop. And mm -hmm. the nice thing is, it's there you go, Susan. We've all got a little novelty <laughs> spatula. <laughs> yep. And it fits perfectly into my smaller beakers because I was really struggling to get sort of most kitchen ones are quite big and chunky and they only fit for the big beakers. But this one fits nicely. So it's, if you keep your eye out, there's lots of little gems that you can find in different shops, depending on what you have in your area. And if in doubt, Amazon. Exactly. We have our own That's Amazon right. storefront links, which I'm sure from Latanica people working on this live can add in the comments for us. But I think the point to take away is there that you can find stuff in your house. Just have a little run, have a little think. Don't panic about everything you need before and start ordering. Go into our skincare entrepreneur mastermind, ask other people what they're doing. Um, just have a little thing and do a little bit of research first. And you'd be amazed how much money you can save and what you actually do have in your oh, house. Yes. Like, I totally agree. And there were a couple of things that I went out and got at my mm -hmm. local dollar store, like the little spatula, which is awesome. And some cork board that I used, you know, as a hot plate and those kinds of things. So lots you can find in thrift stores as well. Exactly. And everything you do need, we do actually cover in our masterclass. And when you get to that episode, we list absolutely everything that you need. So don't panic. We haven't covered everything in this live now. We're just kind of getting you started. But please do watch that episode because it's one of the most, well, they're all important, but that's definitely one you cannot miss. Okay, next question. So for everyone following along with their masterclass who hasn't formulated before, um, is there anything you recommend to buy up front? And that is a leading question because we're going to go with our top five things. So number one, what would you say, Brooke, is the top thing everybody needs? So I think the most important thing that you need when you're formulating that you cannot do without for any formula you have is some form of beaker. So 
These are lab beakers made of borsalite glass, so they're nice mm -hmm. and sturdy. They're quite difficult to smash. I've achieved it occasionally, but <laughs> I was not very say, many. But you have. Yeah, there's been a couple of beaker smashes, but not very many, which is quite nice. And they come in loads and loads of different sizes. I've got them uh, fresh and dulled at the moment. But these are probably the thing you're going to use most when you're formulating, because any formula you make, anything from a facial oil to a body butter, you're going to need one of these at some point during the formulation of making it. So there's plenty of different options you can use for alternatives. But the reason we recommend beakers is, A, you've got rough measurements. You don't tend to use these too specifically, but it gives you a good idea of about where you are. Mm -hmm. And then the main reason is because they are sturdy. So they can be put into mm -hmm. hot water. If you need your ingredients heated, you can heat it in a hot water bath and you can pick it up and you can put it straight into cold and it's not going to smash. So that's the reason we recommend these in particular, but you can use little glass bowls. You can use different smaller glasses if you don't have these, but they are really cheap, really easy to get. I think I bought a packet of six for about 10 pound. So they're not, they're not difficult to get a hold of at all. Plus you can get some really small ones, which are very, very cute. So, I was just going to say that <laughs> one. It's, they're so adorable. <laughs> so this one, is, <laughs> this one is 25 mil and you can get 10 mil ones, but I unfortunately don't have one. I need to find one at some point, but this is 25 mil. This one is 50 mil. And you can see from the marks that I use this one the most. This is the one that I've <laughs> had since I first started my diploma in organic skincare formulation. So this beaker is like 10 years old now but I still use it on an almost weekly basis. This one is 100 mil, and then this one is 250. In wow. terms of sizes, I think the 250, you're not gonna use that much unless you're making big batches of things, but mm -hmm. the 100, the 50, and the 25 are the three I would recommend you start with. So it's when... funny because we did a poll uh, in the Skincare Entrepreneur Mastermind recently, and beakers actually came out as people's favourite um, piece of equipment. And I don't know if there's something satisfying about a beaker. You get to make something in it. It feels good. So, yeah, they're people, big fans in the community. Definitely. Yes, and, and Brooke, somebody is asking. I see some people asking again, where can you get those? Can you get them at Amazon? You can, yeah. You can get beakers on Amazon. You can get them. There's some specific lab shops if you sort of prefer to go other places on the internet but the easiest place really i found them is amazon you can buy lots of them there mm -hmm. great Someone else has also seen can you use mason jars and to get started absolutely i think suzanne's got some on hand that you can use for lots of different things when you're doing formulating so you can use them as beakers or you can use them as packaging, either one. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. This is all about starting, just finding stuff you have in your house to get started. We have people that have created brands that are now international and they started because they had a mason jar and a spatula and they were able to create a cream. So you just need to get started. OK, so number two, what's number two, Brooke? So number two is once you've got your formulation in your little beaker, you need something to stir it with. Now we've got two main options for these. They are the humble glass rod. These are fantastic for stirring pretty much anything, for uh, things like for facial oils, surfactants, mm -hmm. anything that foams. They are brilliant, especially for, I know I saw someone say that, is it not too narrow to get things in? Beakers, that's why you use these glass rods because it's per the perfect size for stirring in the small beakers. Mm -hmm. Or your other option is a mini whisk. These are fantastic when making emulsions such as the face cream we're teaching you to make in the masterclass. They are really small, just the, the very sort of mini version of the balloon whisks you get from kitchen shops. You can get these in kitchen shops. You can get little egg beater ones. This one I think was $1.99 on Amazon, so they're not expensive. And they're very, very useful for just stirry things together and as you can see it it's also cute baby beaker. <laughs> it is very cute <laughs> it comes with a nice little hook on the end to hang it up with if you've got the space but i just put mine in my bag <laughs> mm -hmm. or these actually I, I bought a set of these and they're really inexpensive as well mm -hmm. on uh, amazon God, yeah. Amazon. Amazon seems to be the key for amazon, writing every, yes. everything <laughs> yep <Yeah. laughs> amazon is every formulator's best friend 
I'm just going to take a hello to a few people. Thank you, Vivian, Teresa, Mustafa, Sora, for joining us. Someone's called Caramel. What a fantastic name is that? That's, that's absolutely gorgeous. Um, if you are joining us and you just popped into the live, because some people do, we are talking about our masterclass, which starts on the 17th of April, and we're just going through equipment. So if you know you're joining us from that, fantastic. And if not, please try and get your free ticket now. The link will be in the description, and our team will be adding the link in the comments as well. So. Okay, next one. Now, this is one that we get lots of questions about. What's number three? So number three is really vitally important, and that is your scales. Yeah. Now, as Lisa said, <laughs> we get huge amounts of questions about these because oh, there is a few, we do. We have little green ones. <laughs> Twins. Very cute. <laughs> Twinny. Yeah. So these are fantastic because what this is what you are going to use to weigh out your ingredients. Now, the important thing to note with scales, and it's worth writing it down, I apologise for the glare, is you need a scales that goes down low enough. So you're going to need it to go down to 0 0.01 grams. That's mm -hmm. because when you're weighing out small amounts of ingredients such as essential oils or an antioxidant, you're going to need it in quite small amounts if you're making batches that are 50 grams and below, or even sometimes just 50 grams or 100 grams if you're using small amounts you're going to want it to go down nice and low. So you wouldn't use your normal kitchen scales that you use for baking because it doesn't have a low enough graduation. These are called jewellery scales. That's the easiest name to find them under for weighing things like necklaces and the weight of sort of metal materials. But they are fantastic for formulating. They go down nice and low and they're really good and accurate. The other nice thing is they're cheap, they're not too expensive, they are digital so and can be easily calibrated and they're battery powered and they transport nicely and fit into your bag, which is very cool. Yeah, <laughs> Lauren in the bag. Yes, um, I think I learned the hard way with the jewelry scales because the first thing I went and bought was a regular kitchen scale at my uh, hardware store and that wasn't working properly mm -hmm. because it, yeah, it didn't go down enough. It's a, it's a really easy mistake to make. I think we all do that to start with right. the first formulation I did. I tried to use my kitchen scales and it doesn't work. So, you know, it's These are nice and cheap. I think this one was only about £10. Everything seems mm -hmm. to be about £10 at the moment, but which is quite <laughs> nice. But they're not expensive. So it's definitely worth the investment and they do last really well. Even I think I've had one break on me in the 10 years I've been formulating, but they're really easy to use. Yep, so, I'm just going to... Well worth the investment. For a question up from Sarah, who says, I'm not quite sure she's referencing, Brooke, where do you buy them again? But for everything we're discussing, Amazon storefronts, we have our own um, cookery shops, you know, pound stores, you can find stuff all over the place. We just suggest you have a look at what you might need and just have a little search on the internet. There's not a one-stop shop for this kind of thing. You can um, find stuff in places which you actually sometimes wouldn't expect. Um, I'm just going to throw up this, well, this question from Tanya, who says, are there any restrictions for formulating in your home kitchen? So this is a bigger question. We won't cover this in big detail here. But Brooke, what would you say to someone if they're thinking, like, just way ahead about formulating tons of stuff and everything you might need? What would we say to somebody? So in terms of formulating in your home kitchen for yourself, there's no problem with that. You can formulate in your kitchen if you want to just try and make sure that you sanitize it well and you take food and pets and little children and everything out of the way so that you don't have too much contamination too much going on a lot of our students try to get a different room in their house that's specifically for formulating so that you can leave things up you might have a spare bedroom that you convert i think plenty of people have garden sheds that they use and things like that so it's definitely mm -hmm. possible to formulate in your kitchen when you're starting out, I've used my kitchen for a good four years, I think. So it's definitely possible, definitely doable. Everything is nice and easy because you've got your water access, you've got your heat access. The only time you will have a slight issue is when you come to being business level, which Suzanne mm -hmm. will know better. But running a business out of a kitchen is not advisable. It's probably not the easiest thing in the world. And there are some places in the world where you're not allowed to run a business out of your kitchen. So exactly. it's worth looking up. But in terms of here and now for the masterclass, formulating your face cream, there's absolutely nothing wrong with using your kitchen. Exactly. That's right. And clean it well. 
Yeah. And I was just going to add that a lot of our graduates, that's where they started. They started in their kitchen. That's where I started. I think that's where many of us have started. It's perfect. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're looking to, this person's obviously thinking about creating a business. We do have the International Organic Skincare Entrepreneur Program. I think I said that right. Um, But we talk about that further on down. We'll talk about that within our masterclass as well. So just stay Mm -hmm. tuned and we will give you snippets of that and actually show you why that would be a good thing to maybe start with um, if you are thinking of creating your own brand. You might be here at the masterclass just for fun. You might be thinking of doing your own brand. Everyone is welcome. We're here to cater for everybody. We'll just say if you are thinking about that the future we do cover that so don't worry um i'm just going to pop this up because we do get questions about this Mustafa says can you save the live we don't need to save it because this is on youtube and in our skincare entrepreneur mastermind so if you need to tap out or anything like that you can go back and watch the replay and that is absolutely fine we leave that up forever actually so you can always go back and watch it Mm -hmm. okay so fourth number item what is uh, number four? This one, we get loads of comments about this in our Skincare Entrepreneur Mastermind. Um, so what would we say? Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> I'm just going crazy. Number four. <laughs> so number four is pH strips. And these look like this. So pH strips are what you use to measure the pH of a water-containing product. So you don't have to measure the pH of anything that's purely oil-based. But if it's got water in it, it's going to have a pH. Without getting sort of too much into the science of it, it's um, essentially a measure of hydrogen ions, which basically tells you how acidic or alkaline your product is. So the easiest thing to use for measuring these is pH strips. You've got, um, trying to get it open to show you what they look like. <laughs> so these are what they look like. You've got these little, this full section graduation of different dip things. You dip it into your product lift it out and you can then compare the color based on the chart on the front i'm going the wrong way sorry there you go so you match that then to the chart and that can tell you roughly what the ph is so this is as i said important for water containing products as you get a bit um more towards wanting to formulate professionally you can get what's called a ph meter which does it digitally you can get nice cheap ph meters off of amazon but they do have their limitations with them or you can get sort of fancy lab level pH meters, which are brilliant. They're very, very good, but that's not something you need to be investing in anytime soon, not until you're formulating all the time. For now, these pH strips are very good. You want to get these ones that are the strips, not litmus paper. Litmus Mm -hmm. paper Mm -hmm. is yellow strips of paper that's used for soap making. So those are not quite, What's the word I'm looking for? They're not quite accurate enough right. for your cosmetic mm-hmm. formulations. You want something like this, preferably with a 0.5 degree. This one only has a one, but my ones I use for formulating are a 0.5 degree, mm-hmm. which is increments. Mm-hmm. Increments, that's the one. Yeah. And we do explain this. If this is new to you and this kind of information, because sometimes people can get a bit overwhelmed, we yeah. do explain in the masterclass how to use them and what they are. So please don't worry. It's very much baby steps with the masterclass. So we will show you exactly how to use them. And you'll start having fun with them before you know it. For sure. And Brooke, I just wanted to say I'm really glad you mentioned about the litmus papers because it's what I started with and it did mm-hmm. cause me problems measuring the pH accurately. So the pH strips are a definite. Definitely, yeah. That as I'm repeating again, these are not expensive. They um, are really easy to get on Amazon. You can get them in, you know, lab stores, different shops online, or Amazon, eBay, all of those sorts of places sell these. They're really easy to get. This is just universal test paper. You can get some that are specific for different fluids. So you can get things that are for soil. You can get things that are for pool water. You can get things that are for milk. Try not to get those ones. Try and get ones that are specific for cosmetics or more universal. But when you're starting out, these are cheap and cheerful and they do the job very well. Great. Fabulous. Awesome. Um, just a couple of questions. Mariana or Mary, Marina? Marina says, do you have a link for the green scales? They'll be on our Amazon storefronts, Marina. You can also find them in other places on Amazon, but they will be on our Amazon sites. And another question from Cruella. Fabulous name. Suzanne, I'm going to give this one to you. Is there a preference between using glass, plastic, metal, or even ceramic for tools, stir sticks, etc.? What do you prefer to use when you're formulating? 
Um, I guess the first thing is when you're first starting out, you would use whichever ones you have at hand because that's typically what you will have in the kitchen. Um, many of us prefer to use the glass rods like uh, Brooke was sharing earlier, like those because they're just so accurate. They're, they're so great to deal with. They're actually quite sturdier than you mm -hmm. think they would be for a glass rod. Um, I like using these metal ones. I buy these again on Amazon. They come in a set of 10 or 15 in a kit. So they're very inexpensive. And yes, I mean, again, you know, spatula, <laughs> different spatulas. <laughs> it's not our color scheme, but it still works. Isn't it? So you're still, you're still following, you're still following what we need to do. Yep. Okay. So another question from Can I Divine. just add to that one? Oh yeah, sure. Go for it. I was just going to say, it also depends on which tool you're talking about. So, for example, you wouldn't want a metal whisk that's made out of glass. That wouldn't work quite so well. So right. things like spatulas will come in silicone or plastic. These rods are easiest in glass. The spoon Suzanne has is easiest in metal. So different types of equipment will come in different materials. So there's not one material that's better than another. It just varies depending on what tool you're trying to use. We try and avoid things like wooden spoons because they are harder to clean. They're harder to keep mm -hmm. sanitary. So preferably you want something that's non-porous. So you want something that's silicone. You want something that's glass, easy to clean, easy to spray down and sanitize. But in general, different tools will be different materials. There's no one that's better than another. Mm -hmm. Right. Fantastic. See, Brooke knows her stuff. Brooke was also a student with us yep. and <laughs> is I now... Was. The, the leader of the pack, so to speak. <laughs> um, okay, question from Divine Beauty, fabulous name. Can you elaborate on the mini homogenizer? Is a frother, will a frother suffice? I think they're trying to say. Brooke, what do we think? Ah, so that is a very good question, and I am glad you brought that up. I have my little mini homogenizer here. Nice. Which I can show you. So the key with this is if you look here, you can see the blade is flat. So when you talk about little milk frothers, they have a whisk style blade, which is designed to froth milk by incorporating huge amounts of air, which gives you a lot of bubbles. You don't want that when you're formulating because having too much air makes your product destabilize. So you want this that's nice and flat that is gonna blend your product without making it froth up. So when you get to things like having surfactants or even emulsifiers, they can create a lot of bubbles if you put too much energy into them. Even oils, you can get bubbles in them if you're with, you whisk them too quickly. So don't get a milk frother. It's not going to do the same thing. You want one with a flat blade like this. These mm. are more difficult to find, I will admit, but they are very handy if you can get a hold of them. This one in particular is called a No Pro Mini Mixer. It comes mm -hmm. with a set of different attachments and they just pull off and you can swap them and it's battery powered so it's very useful for using for small batches when you get to bigger batches you can think use things like an immersion blender which is one of those stick blenders that you put in and it has a blade that spins around like you would use for soup not the kind of whisk you would use to whip cream so you want things that are flat and you want to look at your product and think is this going to incorporate a huge amount of air or not so for this case it wouldn't which is what you want there are the odd I've... products where you want air, such as a body butter that you whip, but nine times out of ten, no air is better. Mm -hmm. I can feel people in the comments are going to be so excited from looking at that. They're going to be saying, I want that exact link. I want to get that one. <laughs> that always happens. Um, thank you, Brooke. That was a really it is, good it is linked on our Amazon storefront, so the link is there for you. Brilliant. Our store from, which is nice. And that brings me on to the question from Angela, who says, are all the items on the shopping list that were sent out? I missed the first 15 minutes. So that's a great question because once you get your ticket, you get an email. It takes you through to a study area where you can download your workbook, your shopping guide and your supply guide. So we give you everything you need. In this slide, we're just going through a couple of things that you need and explain them a little bit more, giving you some insight into formulation. But we give you everything you need in PDFs when you sign up. So if anyone that doesn't have their ticket, all you need to do is use the link that's in the description or being shared by the team and go there and download your PDFs and you are ready to go and you can get ordering. And that brings yes, me... Yeah. Lisa, the shop, I just wanted to mention about the shopping list as well. Yeah, sure. That it will it will tell you all the ingredients that you need to buy and suggested yeah. amounts for making the uh, 
the products that you'll be learning to make in the workbook and the masterclass workbook for sure yeah exactly we really do give people exactly what they need the exact amounts we try and help you with everything we're not just giving you a diy and kind of letting you go out there and mm -hmm. you know figure it out we tried to help you with it. absolutely everything so suzanne is absolutely um correct before we go on to number five, I'm just going to throw up this question from Kerry, who says, when is the masterclass? It's April 17th. <laughs> so you've got tons of time to get everything you need. Don't worry. All the suppliers that we've listed uh, in the PDF when you go into your study area still have all the kits. And speaking of kits, Lorraine and Anna will be showcasing one of the kits that you can get next week uh, on the 3rd uh, of April, I believe. And they're going to show you everything that's in it. That one's going to be really, really exciting. So make sure you sign up for all the notifications so you don't miss that live because that one's going to be great. Okay, so number five, Suzanne, what is the number five thing that we definitely recommend everybody needs? Oh my goodness, you caught me off guard on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you well, a I'll give you a tip. It's the workbook, isn't it? Definitely. Yes. It is yes, the for sure. workbook. This you is need to have thing. your workbook. That is your little everything for this masterclass. So you have to make sure you, you have signed peek. up you will go into the link that your email provides and it's really handy if you can bookmark that link to your platform so you can go to your study area yeah. link it in your bookmarks and then you'll have access to it every day so you'll be able to see and follow through with everybody on the different episodes Exactly. And the reason why it's the most important is it just has every single thing you need. There's something really real about printing something off. We go through all the lessons in here. We give you a little bit of homework for each one just to make sure you're you're following up the masterclass. We tell you when everything is exactly. So it really is so helpful. And once you print this off, it's yours to keep forever. There's so much valuable information just in this workbook alone. So it's really funny to like hold it to the side. But yeah, this really, and it's for free. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is go to that link, like Suzanne just said, go to your study area and download your workbook. And then you are, I mean, that the biggest job is done already. As soon as you've downloaded that workbook, you are practically ready to go. So I'm just going to see everyone in the comments saying they've downloaded the workbook. It's really simple. The link will be in the comments below. So I can see a couple of people saying they've got it. So thank you so much. Thank yes, you. So you just, yeah. One, one little comment. Go. If by chance you have registered and you have not, if you don't think you have received the email with your link, you have to be sure and check your spam in your inbox because you have received it. And we have a lot of these questions coming up. So you have received it. So if you registered, you got it. So make sure you click it, you link it, and you bookmark it on your browser and your computer so you can have access to exactly. the study group, the study course. And there's a few of these books. So I'm going to put this up because I knew this would happen. <laughs> so can you repeat the brand <laughs> of the mini homogenizer? Because I know everyone's going to be excited about that. So the brand is called No Pro. Mm -hmm. I zoom in there. Hopefully, you can see the spelling and freeze frame it there. So yep. it's called No Pro, and it's available on Amazon, which is one of the only places I've seen that you can find them by typing in No Pro. You can get them directly from No Pro's website, but Amazon is the easiest place to get it. We have it linked in our Amazon storefront on our web page. So go through to the link that we have in the comments, look into our section on equipment, and you will find it in the list there. Exactly. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. It's so nice to just have this opportunity to connect with you. We have taught 500,000 people um, throughout our free trainings online. So this really is a place to be for just a hub of formulation fun. And it's such a wonderful, loving community. Please do go and join the Skincare Entrepreneur Mastermind. As soon as the masterclass starts, you'll see a ton of pictures in there, people starting to make their emotions, starting to make their cream. And it's just fun. It really makes you feel like you're kind of doing it with other people as well. So, and Suzanne, you see the pictures in there as well. People, don't you? People have oh my goodness, just yes. changing their lives. And we love it. We will love it when you take your selfies with your workbook. Yeah. So make sure you take selfies with your workbook, post them, and tag uh, Formula Botanica with a hashtag, and so we can see you on all the social media as well. Exactly. And the cream, Brooke. Do you have the cream that we're going to? I do to be have making? the cream. So this is the face cream that we're going to be teaching you how to make. Lovely. It's a beautiful orange colour. It's not quite showing on my screen with the light, but this is what it looks like. Gorgeous. Nice you can and see shiny. It's beautiful. Glossy. Yeah, you can see it from here. <laughs> and it's nice and thick because you turn it upside down and it doesn't drip. So it's a really nice, rich cream. So 
hopefully you're all getting excited because this is exactly what we're going to teach you how to make by the end of the masterclass you will have your own ice cream amazing well thank you everyone awesome. for joining us we start on april 17th get the date in the diary don't forget to join lorraine and anna when they do their live next week on the 3rd of april that's going to be an absolutely great one we give you a sneak peek of one of our supplier kits and actually hearing from lorraine is fantastic because she's so busy so actually getting her time to sit down and ask her a few questions is just it's so much fun everyone has a ball so thank you everyone for joining us thank you Susanna brooke that was thank really, you really so great. much and thank you to everyone for joining and we'll see you on the next live. We'll see you in the Skincare Entrepreneur Mastermind and we'll see you on all of our social channels. So see you soon, guys. Thank Bye. you, everyone. See you.